Hell of a Boss just released its craziest episode yet, this one focusing mostly on Fizzeroli and Osmodius, but also including a handful of cool side characters, as well as giving us the revelation of what tragedy really drove this wedge between Blitz and Fizz so long ago. We got spoilers ahead, so go watch the episode if you haven't already, because we're going to break it all down. Now this was the craziest episode yet to me. Normally, I reserve that kind of statement for the finales, premieres, and big events, but this is sort of a mid-season finale, marking the end of the first half of Season 2, with the next half not premiering until probably the end of this year. So it makes sense that this would be a pretty big episode. And it actually combined a lot of the new elements that were introduced from one episode to the next this season into a really interesting climax. The show is famous for introducing iconic side characters and giving them their own little focus about once a season so far, but after introducing Moxie's father Crimson this season and bringing Stryker back once already, the two returned in this big episode that, with Fizzarelli and Osmodius being involved, really felt like a giant crossover of the characters. The episode opened with Fizzarelli and Osmodius waking up and starting their day in the Lust Ring, reminding us of what we learned about them in Episode 7 of Season 1, which is that they are a lovey-dovey couple pretending to only be interested in each other sexually because it would be considered scandalous if they don't. Fizzarelli seems more worried about Osmodius' image than Osmodius himself, and asked to take his trip to the Greed Ring alone so that they won't get caught cuddling again like they did in Episode 7. From this, we learn that while Fizzarelli is a business partner with Osmodius, he's primarily known as the Brand of Mammon, the embodiment of greed and the ruler of the Greed Ring. Mammon is said to appear in the next episode, with it also being heavily Fizzarelli focused. But for now, all we really know is that he is a clown-themed royal demon who is known for having a much more dangerous ring than Osmodius at the very least. When Fizzarelli goes there, he of course trips into Blitz, and they literally get roped into an adventure together when Stryker abducts them with his lasso to prove to Crimson he would be a valuable assassin. Crimson is a powerful figure in the Greed Ring, and I believe he has hired Stryker to kill Moxie, something foreshadowed at the end of his previous episode. This was a wild way for so many different characters to come together, and I'm excited to see the show continue to explore how these different iconic characters will bounce off of each other. Crimson holds Fizzarelli and Blitz hostage, trying to force Osmodius to sign over as much power as possible to Crimson in exchange for Fizzarelli's life. At this time, Osmodius is meeting with Stolas, who has come to ask for an Osmodian crystal. Stolas confirms here that Succubus, with their Osmodian crystals, are the only species in Hell with large-scale access to Earth, with it being a bit rare for one of those crystals to make it to the black market for someone like Barbie Wire to use for drug trades up on Earth, explaining why Blitz couldn't go just buy one himself. Osmodius makes it clear he could give a crystal to Stolas if he wants to, which probably wouldn't even be illegal, as Blitz does have a business license and operates in a building that seems to tailor specifically to demons with portal access to Earth. However, Osmodius knows Fizzarelli hates Blitz, so refuses. Stolas, however, tries to make himself useful to Osmodius by reading the contracts being presented to him and looking for traps. As a royal sin, Osmodius' contracts would be extremely binding, and once he gets Fizzarelli back, he may magically not be able to undo the deal, or even have Crimson killed, as his safety may be magically assured by the deal. Blitz and Fizzarelli are able to escape on their own, of course, but the real meat of the episode came down to their interactions, conversations, and the dramatic reveal of how they went from seemingly best friends as children to being so angry with each other as adults. Now, before we got the dramatic reveal and the inevitable emotional moments that followed, Fizz and Blitz actually got a chance to bond with each other over where they currently are in life. It was foreshadowed that Blitz did something to ruin the lives of many people, particularly Fizzarelli. But since then, Fizzarelli has actually become even more famous than he was at Blitz's family circus. While he was definitely the star of the show there, he's now one of the most famous figures in all of Hell, being pushed into the spotlight not just by one, but two royal rulers of the Rings of Hell. And as Fizzarelli makes really clear, he is in love with Osmodius, and feels like Osmodius understands him in a way no one else does. We saw this beautifully displayed in their morning routine, where even when Fizzarelli is being his most obnoxious, Osmodius only acts mildly annoyed and really just indulges Fizzarelli's behavior. In many ways, it is like the dynamic of Blitz and Stolas, where Blitz feels the need to act like his worst self because he needs to prove to himself that Stolas will still keep chasing him. 
However, in this conversation with Fizz, Blitz presents his issue entirely backwards. The way he tells it to Fizzarole, Stolas doesn't really like him, and is just another rich privileged jerk who wants to slum it with Blitz. Blitz claims that Stolas overwhelms him with affection and attention as part of an act, but Fizz is able to explain from his own experience with Osmodeus that this is real affection. And on some level, Blitz knows this. He just can't acknowledge it because he needs Stolas to go out of his way and beyond this to prove it to him. Blitz needs to know he's loved by having someone keep doing this no matter how naive Blitz plays to the situation, because he can't admit to himself that someone like Stolas actually cares and won't just abandon him later. The experience Fizzarale conveys to Stolas in this conversation is part of the process Blitz is going through to accept that Stolas does in fact truly appreciate him and that it will be safe for Blitz to treat Stolas in a similar way. Their conversation is presented entirely as insults and bragging and telling each other what is what, but by the end of it, they have a framework to understand each other as being in similar situations. Because of this, when Blitz and Fizzaroli finally talk about their fallout, they are able to find a place of understanding with each other instead of digging deeper into trying to insult each other. Through flashbacks and conversation, it is explained that Fizz and Blitz were great friends for much of their young life, but from Fizzaroli's perspective, Blitz always seemed jealous of Fizz's attention in the spotlight, something we even saw back in episode 1 of this season. The tragic event that separated Fizz and Blitz happened on Fizzaroli's birthday over 15 years ago, which was being celebrated by the family circus, where Blitz's father Buxo is seen giving Fizzaroli a card that says, I wish you were my son. In the season premiere, we saw that Buxo prized Fizzarelli above Blitz, loaning out Blitz to royals and giving him dangerous missions while there to steal from them. It would make sense that he saw Fizzarelli as the son he wished he had, and from Fizz's perspective, that would make Blitz very jealous. The last thing Fizz saw was Blitz looking angry that Fizz got the card from his father, before the tent suddenly catching on fire. This, to Fizzarelli, looked like a purposeful attempt to ruin Fizz and destroy his career so that Blitz could be the big star of the circus. The fire caused an explosion when it reached some fireworks, and Fizzarelli lost his horns, would get covered in scars, and burnt his limbs beyond repair. This explains why his jester hat flows so freely when he bounces around, as his horns are nearly broken down to his skull. His skin is nearly pure white from the burns, with a little red spot on his backside as we saw when he woke up in the morning, and the red spot on his nose being saved only because he was ironically wearing a red clown nose when the explosion happened. His limbs burnt beyond repair would lead him to getting robotic enhancements, and thus he went from a normal looking imp to the jester themed imp we know today. The last thing Fizz remembered after the explosion was Blitz running away while Fizz burnt to death. This was a tragic revelation that went a lot deeper than I expected. It's been a popular theory for a while now that a fire at the circus caused Fizzarelli to lose his limbs, and it's something that was foreshadowed back in episode 2 when Robofizz was burned in a very similar pattern to how Blitz got his own scar over his eye, which this episode revealed was also caused by the explosion. The addition of Buxo giving Fizzarelli that card, wishing Fizzarelli was his son, added such a layer to the tragedy that Fizz lived with for the last 15 years, but according to Blitz, that wasn't the entire story. Blitz revealed to Fizz that this particular time was very hard for him, and that he was trying to get help. He never says exactly why that time was hard or what help he needed, but it leaves open another mystery to extend off of this one, giving us a lot of answers that were satisfying while leaving something left to explore. That night, Blitz had no intention of hurting Blitz, but instead was actually holding a love letter based on the heart it had on it, with a note saying, for Fizz's eyes only. Whatever else Blitz was dealing with, he was planning to reveal his feelings for Fizz that night, but after seeing what happened with his father and his card, it pushed Blitz over the edge and he instead went to go cry. He simply pushed a guy out of the way who was carrying a happy birthday cake for Fizz, which ended up making the tent catch fire, which eventually got to some dangerous fireworks. This led to an interestingly green fire, such as the one we saw at Lululand, that episode once again foreshadowing this big reveal. Of course, along with Fizzarole, Blitz indicates that he lost his mother in that accident as well, with a photo of her with Blitz and Barbie burning with green fire. Blitz said that Fizz was the only person he had left, because even though his sister survived, she didn't want to see Blitz anymore. Blitz claims that some people told Blitz that Fizz didn't want to see Blitz, and Fizz reveals that no one told him that Blitz even wanted to see him. I imagine this is a situation similar to what we saw in the episode where Blitz sneaks into the rehab facility to try and see Barbie Wire. 
They did their best to keep Blitz out, and really insisted on him leaving her alone. I imagine after the accident, Blitz may have tried to see Fizz in a similar way, perhaps at a hospital, but was told he was not wanted there. Now, this didn't repair their relationship in the traditional sense, but they were able to forgive each other for what happened and everything that's happened since. At the end of the day, Fizzarelli got everything he could have dreamed for as an imp in hell, and without the explosion, none of that would have happened, including being with the love of his life. More than anything, this gave Fizz closure, as the one loose end from his previous life was that he thought his best friend wanted to hurt him. And now that Fizzarelli knows that it is an accident, he is able to let go of that and simply enjoy his new life. The episode ended with a similar explosion to the one at the circus while the two made their escape, and this time Blitz didn't run away, but instead rescued Fizzarelli. When Fizz returned to Osmodius, this made him tell Osmodius to give Blitz the Osmodian Crystal, which means going forward, Blitz won't need the Grimoire. This is the perfect place to end the first half of Season 2, finally following up on what it promised in the premiere, with Blitz being able to return the Grimoire and no longer being bound to Stolas with their monthly arrangements. And who knows how their relationship might develop from there, but what do you think? Let me know your thoughts on the new episode in the comments down below, as well as any theories, topics, or other videos you want me to cover for this new episode. See you guys next time!